We're looking at the last piece here, uh, which is a way of diagrammatically, visually, graphically representing a database. Okay, particularly a relational database. Okay, so this is called. Uh, it's got two names. It's called a database schema, that's the main word uh, you'll hear for it. Schema, you can hear the word schematic that comes out of that, right? Schematic diagram. Occasionally, you'll hear it called an ERD, which is an entity relationship diagram. And the reason why it's called that is because it's filled with entities and relationships. But I'll show you that in a second. So here it is. Um, remember we said the basic building blocks of a relational database are two of them. Number one, you've got tables, right? And your tables have fields. And then these fields are related to other fields in other tables. So how do we show that? Well, a nice simple way of doing it is by saying, take each table and let's make a, a rectangle out of it. I'll show you what I mean. So for instance, students, right? Okay. Underneath the name of your table, you list all of the fields that you know about it, okay? So for instance, you might say first name, last name, class ID, for instance, um, and let's say date of birth, okay? So that's, that's a pretty typical set of fields that you would know about a student. And then you put it in a box like this, okay? But this table doesn't sit on its own, it's a relational database. It might be related to, for instance, a class table, okay? <coughs> Excuse me. So what kinds of things might you know about a class? Well, you'll know its ID, its name, right? Um, that class ID, that class, sorry, it might have a teacher associated with it. And maybe you know its location, so you might say room. Okay. Now, what you can see here is that I've got some uh, primary keys and foreign keys happening here, right? In the class table, in this table, um, class ID is what kind of key is it? Hmm. Um, I think it's a primary key, right? It's a unique identifier. Every class will have a different class ID. Okay. So you've got a key here which appears in another table. So class ID, student.class ID is a foreign key. Class.class ID is a primary key. Okay? Because they're linked, I'll put a link like that. Okay? Now, um, sometimes you'll also be asked to describe the nature of this relationship here. So it's either one to one, one to many, or many to many. So you have to think about it. Which one is it? Uh, let's just imagine we're in a primary school, okay, primary school. How many classes does a student have in a primary school? In a primary school, you just have the one, right? You're like, I'm in 6C, right? And you're like in that class for all year, okay? So a student has one class. Now you ask the question from the other way around. How many uh, students does a class have? And the answer is a class has many students, right? Whatever kind of class you've got. So this is going to be one to many. Okay, one to many. So you'd put the, um, the many here and the one up here. Okay. One class has many students, but a student only has one class. Okay. All right, now, this is just for the sake of it. Let's put one more table on here, okay, uh, which is probably the most natural one is a teacher. Okay. What kinds of things might you know about the teacher? Uh, well, I guess they'd have their own ID. You know, for instance, uh, in this school, we make three-letter codes out of every teacher's name, right? And they have to not overlap. So, I mean, mine, mine's easy because my surname is three letters, okay? But you've got other teachers in the school. For instance, we have a Mr. Kowalski and a Mrs. Kowalski, okay? So, Mrs. Kowalski was here at the school first. So, she got the teacher ID K-O-W, first three letters of her name. But Mr. Kowalski arrived later, right? So, he couldn't take K-O-W because that would make this no longer a primary key. Does that make sense? So that's why, does anyone have Mr. Kowalski as their teacher? Yeah, okay, so you guys know. His uh, code is? Yeah, total knockout, which is, that's a great, actually that's a great name, right? Uh, well, because T is the first letter of his name, 
right? So you have to pick these fields in order to make sure that you can still sort with them. You got a teacher ID. Uh, you might have things like, say, the subject that they teach. Oh, I just broke down. That's a secondary school thing, but anyway. Uh, maybe you know their address. Um, you get that. Well, you wouldn't know their address. The school would know their address. Okay. Um, so there's our table. Okay. And you can see, again, you've got this relationship happening. Okay. And it's going to be the same kind of relationship that you had. Um, well, actually, no, here it's a bit different, isn't it? Uh, because I said, you know, we're talking about a, um, a primary school, right? How many classes does a teacher teach in a primary school? Answer, one. They just take care of one class, right? And in the same way, the class will only have one teacher. So this would be one to one. Okay? So that's a database schema. And you can see what's it filled with. It's filled with the entities. That's the names of the tables. And it's also got the uh, relationships between those entities. Okay? Hence, entity relationship diagram. Now you'll be asked to draw these quite a lot. Or sometimes you'll get one given to you and you might need to fill in the nature of the relationships or fill in some of the tables that are missing or maybe add in a table that uh, isn't there but would help. Okay, so that's how you draw a database schema. Uh, 